Greetings, welcome to the first version of our integrated circular city system in virtual reality. I'm presently in the Autodesk Stingray game engine. We've modeled out the city in 3ds max and have placed it in two engines the second engine is unreal engine 4. there are a variety of other engines on the market most notably unity uh, i was having some crashing issues with unity so the city is not in unity there's also cry engine the first version of this city we created in cry engine unfortunately that's no longer available and more recently i've been having crashing issues also with cry engine so chosen not to uh, to put cr to use CryEngine for this purpose at the present point in time. Amazon has their own engine. They purchased an earlier version of CryEngine and have been developing their own engine from that point forward. Their engine is called Lumberyard. I really enjoyed working in CryEngine in the past, so I hope to work again with, uh, with that sort of engine. I hope to work with Amazon's Lumberyard in the not too distant future. I have access to an HTC Vive, so that's what I'm using here. The HTC Vive, the two controllers, and I have the head-mounted display on my head. On the left-hand controller, I have a laser, and the right-hand controller, I have a teleporter jumper. Here on the floor, we have a we have the Oravana project logo. There is meaningful significance behind this logo. Each of these elements represents something, and you can find a description of the logo and the meaning behind it on the Oravana project's website, specifically uh, on our uh, social system specification at the end of the social system specification. The Oravana project's website is oravana.com. That's A-U-R-A-V-A-N-A dot com. Over here, we, oh, uh, this is actually a projected image. So you can see it's being projected on the mesh, the floor mesh, which has its own texture. It's being projected on the floor. And because it resides slightly above the floor, it's actually also, uh, you can get it, pro it's also being projected on the controllers here. Now I could lower it so that it wasn't projected this high and therefore not projected on the controllers. But I thought this was kind of an interesting effect to show you. Over here, we have an introduction to the city. Welcome to the first version of our open source integrated city simulation system by the Oravana project. Now all of the models here you can access via our GitHub page. I'm hoping we're, we're releasing in an open source Creative Commons non-commercial manner, so hopefully we can collaborate upon its design, test out our ideas, test out various, simulate various different designs, and come to a more optimized design before we build the city together in real life. The excellent thing about virtual reality is you can bring models in virtual reality, begin simulating interaction, simulating various technologies, testing out your designs, uh, keeping them if they work and throwing them out if they don't function well and you can not only do it at real world scale Which this city is but you can also do it at a miniaturized scale and in the other video of Unreal Engine 4 We basically or I basically miniaturized that city and uh, you'll be able to see a miniaturized version of the city and pick up some of the objects We another great thing we can program interaction into virtual reality So, you know, I can interact with these doors I can trigger the opening of doors and I can go out here and the doors close automatically Automatically. Over here, there are several different uh, several diff different animations. The first animation is uh, very simple. It's of the um, here we have the grid path layout of the city. So these are the primary paths of the city we're presently in. And then underneath is the pipe distribution uh, network of the city or the pipe distribution layout of the city. And there are four pipes. If I walk in close, you should be able to see four different pipes. I don't know if you can see that, there are four pipes there. Okay, so we have another animation over here. The four pipes that I was just describing from that animation we have here. Uh, one of the pipes has a rail connecting mover system that connects all buildings. So every building has an access point for uh, depositing and picking up these and sometimes in an apartment building every every apartment has an access point for this rail connected mover system so this animation shows container transportation via rail connected mover uh, and there are several different pipes here i'll jump in to play the animation so the container is traveling along the the, uh, the conveyor belt reaches the container mover the container mover attaches to the container and then transports the container container via this rail so if I jump out over here and then jump back in, we can watch the animation from this direction. Container is moving along the conveyor belt. Container mover attaches to the container and then transports it along the rail. 
There are also three pipes here. I imagine that a city like this will have a pneumatic distribution system. Pneumatic systems are commonly found when you visit banks. You drive up to the bank and you put your, you know, uh, your credit, your card or your checkbook in a capsule and the capsule is sucked to the, tell, the bank teller and then sent back to you. So every building could have a pneumatic, uh, could have pneumatic distribution access. And the pneumatic system is generally only operates over a short distance, but we have planters down the pathway of this, down all primary pathways in this city. And a lot of the architecture and objects in this city are multifunctional. So one could imagine that the planters have a dual function. First function is that of a permacultural garden um, above, but they could also be uh, pneumatic distribution rechargers for the pneumatic distribution system. So if I jump out, I'll play the animation once more for you, jump a little bit farther away and then jump here and we can see the animation from uh, this perspective. Okay, the container mover attaches and then transports the container to its intended destination. Again, here we have another very simple animation with an XYZ gizmo in the center. This animation, uh, you can see the integrated, the, the network of integrated city systems rising and then becoming larger, coming closer, and then retreating back down. Okay, you have two different cities here, two different designs of city. Uh, one here on the platform, right here, and then this is uh, representative of the city we're presently in. This is a different type of circular city. I imagine that in community there will be a whole host of different configurations of city. It's just I've modeled out um, you know, circular cities here because a circular city is a highly efficient design in terms of the usage of material resources. So this is the network of integrated circular city systems and each city is connected via mass, a mass via a mass rapid transport system. Uh, so you have circular city, reach the boundary, then you have mass rapid transportation system to another circular city, forming a network of integrated circular city systems. At the boundary of the city, we rely, we, we allow nature to return to its wild state. Of course, we'll, we can still caretake nature, and we might also have some facilities out in nature for manufacturing and for recreation, so. Uh, yeah, anything else to show you here? No, I think that's about it. Okay, over here we don't have any animation, uh, but I do have, it's basically a static mesh or a static display, an XYZ gizmo in the center. Now this is representative of the city that we're presently in. It's a city with concentric circles in the Orvana's design specifications. We also have some layouts with overlapping circles, but this is a concentric circular integrated city. So here, depending upon uh, terminology, sometimes this central area is known as C0, sometimes it's known as C1. If we were to call it C1, there would be one circular, two circulars, three circulars, four circulars, five circulars, six circulars, seven circulars, eight circulars, nine circulars. So the city is divided into radial sectors right here and then circular belts or circulars. And each circular in this city has one uh, core or primary function and then a host of secondary and tertiary functions. Each radial sector is divided by a radial pathway and each circular belt or circular is divided by a circular pathway. Uh, the city itself is two kilometers in diameter. From there to there is two kilometers, so it's a one kilometer radius. Um, we are presently in, the building we're presently in resides in the center of the circular city. Uh, the core function of the next circular out is that of uh, water management, including fountains and pools. So if we look out here, you can see it right there. There's a, a pool out there. The next circular, which extends all the way around the city there, is the permacultural garden belt. So here we have a variety of different walking paths and a variety of different permacultural gardens. And the next is the intersystem operations belt. So we have buildings and spaces for intersystem teams, also a variety of different common access uh, spaces for a wide variety of different other activities. Then we have the recreational belt. Here we have various recreational spaces, including courts, uh, pools, yeah, uh, indoor and outdoor swimming ponds, 
um, and a variety of other different uh, structures for leisure and recreational activity. Then we come to the low density dwelling belt. Here we have personal homes um, and also some common access buildings along with beautiful gardens and other open spaces. Then we have the high density dwelling belt. Here we have three apartments per radial sector of which there are eight radial sectors, one radial sector, two radial sectors, three, four, five, six, seven, eight radial sectors. So here we have the high density dwelling. We have three apartments per, uh, per segment or cell. Depending upon terminology, sometimes these areas are known as segments and sometimes they're also known as cells. So you could have different designations depending upon context. Then we approach the first water channel right here, also goes all the way around the city. Then we have the greenhouse belt. And the greenhouse belt also has walking and bicycling paths and is pretty in and of itself. Then we have the secondary water channel. Then we have the circular symbiotic farming belt uh, separated into zones. The closest zone here next to the first water channel was the agricultural belt. Then we have the circular symbiotic farming extending all the way around this circle. And in that belt, we have orchards. There could also be buildings for various other uh, recreational and sporting activities. So we could have a sports stadium out here. And then at the boundary, we could also have other sorts of dwellings for people who prefer living closer to nature, but would, you know, people living closer to nature and you maybe live in a, a condo with um, maybe three or four other families and you're closer to nature, but farther away from all the activities available and spaces available uh, in the inner form of the city. So this is basically just a walkthrough that I'm providing you of this circular city system. And it's also just a proof of concept. It was created fairly quickly while I'm working on the material system specification. It's not meant to be perfect or precise in any way. It's just showing it's a proof of concept. It's saying, you know, we can actually right now model the city out, simulate its design and work with it. Uh, both in a game engine and in virtual reality. So we can interact with some of the objects in the city. I can pick up this automated uh, service utility vehicle. I can drop it, I can bang into it. I can program a variety of different interactions. Almost anything you, know, you can do in the physical world, you can also program into one of these game engines and a lot more than you can do in the physical world. So as I mentioned before, the first circular segment we come to is the water management segment or one of the water management uh, circulars. Here we have pools and fountains. I'm not gonna walk around the city, although it's basically the same, because it's essentially the same all the way around. I've just created one circular, uh, one circular sector and duplicated, and then I've kind of modified some of the buildings uh, for each of the different sectors. So for some of the circulars, I will walk around the city, but for this circular, I don't see any purpose to walk around the city because you'll just be seeing the exact same thing duplicated all the way around the city. Here is one of the planters that I was referring to earlier on the top. We could have a permacultural garden and then we could have areas for recharging uh, the pneumatic distribution system if the city has a pneumatic distribution system. Over here we have uh, a bollard light. Actually there are two lights on this bollard. We have a white light and a red light. At night I expect that we'd have the red light on so that we don't interfere with uh, humans and other organisms melatonin production, but in the case of an emergency, we could always turn the white light on. And at the top here, we have a solar panel. Um, there's a solar panel and then we have the two lights. Now this belt is the permacultural walking garden belt. Um, now there is uh, there are a few issues with Autodust Stingray. One of the issues is that the vegetation when painted on the terrain uh, doesn't necessarily always appear in virtual real reality. That's probably something that I'm doing wrong, but that's an issue I've been having. And to some degree, it's actually a beneficial issue at the present point in time, because as I look around the city, I'm getting approximately 60 frames per second or 60 FPS. Now the HTC Vive is optimized for 90 frames per second. So 60 frames per second is, you know, 30 frames lower than 90 frames. So if this was city was operating uh, presently at 90 frames per second, I'd be getting a much more optimized viewing experience, at least in virtual reality. 
Here you can see a few clumps of grass with flowers, but you can imagine that when we, uh, you know, when we're actually simulating the city as a whole, then this would be filled with uh, beautiful vegetation and trees, and there would be there be beautiful walking paths through here for both, uh, you know, uh, for leisure, for um, quiet contemplation, for strolling, and also permaculture for producing various materials, textiles, and for food cultivation. Right now we just have clumps of grass and flower, but um, yeah. And when I put a lot of vegetation in here and that vegetation does end up appearing in virtual reality, the frames per second can drop to something like 30 or 40 frames per second. And so that makes a real big difference when I put on the, the, HM, the, the HTC Vive headset. Uh, the experience becomes quite uncomfortable um, at approximately 30 or 40 frames per second. It's even, I mean, it's okay at 60 frames per second, which is standard now for a lot of other uh, virtual reality systems, although the HTC Vive uh, is optimized for a higher frame rate than most other virtual reality systems, at least at the time that this is being created. Here we have a compression structure for the intercity rail transportation system, but I'll point that out later in this, uh, later in this walkthrough. Here we have a circular path separating the uh, permacultural walking area from the intersystem operation area. And in front of me, moving toward me, is the PR is a vehicle in the PRT system or personal rapid transportation system. So although this is a walking garden city, and I expect that most people will either walk or bicycle around the city, if you know, someone is incapable of walking around the city or for some reason chooses not to walk around the city, there are also uh, PRT vehicles that you can call that will transport you around the city. Now in the future, I imagine that we will have some of these PRV, P, uh, PRT vehicles interactive so you can, you can uh, you know, jump into one of them and have an interactive visual tour of the city. We, uh, you know, we can record ourselves and then have the, uh, the vehicle kind of walk, take someone around the city and give you an interactive tour of the city or a recorded tour of the city. A second issue I've been having in Autodesk Stingray is sculpting the terrain. Uh, terrain sculpting operates real well in Unreal Engine 4 and also CryEngine or Amazon's Lumberyard, but it's uh, Autodesk Stingray is a somewhat newer engine than those engines, and terrain sculpting is just a real hassle to get perfect. So hopefully they'll continue working on that and improve that in the not too distant future. Now, depending upon the geographic location of the city and the culture of the city, you know, the architecture will be different. Uh, if there's a lot of rain and the city gets a lot of rain, we'll have secondary or tertiary water channels like this for drainage and transport of water off some of the surfaces. And above those, we could have uh, additional pipes or pipe distribution. So they don't necessarily have to be put under the primary pathways. We could also have them above some of the secondary and tertiary water channels or next to the primary pathways. Okay, what else do I have to show you? So I have some vines along here. I don't know, that's something to, we'd have to really consider and analyze in the actual city, but I thought it was kind of pretty to put vines along there. Okay, we can walk into some of the buildings in this sector. Let me bring you around. Where, wherever you see that red X is a place you can't jump or can't teleport to. So we can walk inside some of these buildings and look at the space. Look inside there. We can walk inside here and show you, uh, show you the total volume of space available. Okay, now I'm gonna walk outside and then jump onto the balcony here. Let's see, can I jump onto the balcony? All right, actually, there we go. We can look out over the city. Okay, you can see the PRT vehicle down there. All right, now I'm gonna jump down. I'll jump up here and then jump down. Ah, what you're, see what you're seeing here is Z fighting. 
That's again another issue that's uh, more common with Autodesk Stingray than any of the other engines is uh, Z fighting. You'll notice when I jump down here the Z fighting stops and I'll explain what Z fighting is in a moment. I'll explain it down here. So you can still see a bit of Z fighting near the edge of this pathway. So Z fighting is when you have two meshes and they're so close to one another that the engine doesn't know which one to recognize or which one to render at any given time so it ends up rendering both uh, at different times or different time intervals. So, and it's a worse issue when you're farther away, or it generally appears when you're farther away, but it's definitely, so you, you def when we jump up onto the balcony at the, at the top of the apartment building and look down, you'll see a lot of Z fighting. This isn't such a big issue in other engines, but it's something that uh, Autodesk Stingray definitely has an issue with at the present point in time. Okay, so passing another automated service utility vehicle. Okay, here again we can program interaction into the environment, so we can open the door. Again, wherever you see the red X is someplace you can't jump to. Sometimes I have difficulty walking through this door, I don't know why, but if you point the controller at the floor, you won't have any issue. You'll be able to walk through the, the, uh, the door pretty easily. So I can pick up this, maybe bang it into that utility vehicle, drop it over there, jump over here, put my head inside of it, look around. Okay, you bang it around. Yep. Okay, point at the floor, walk outside, close the door. Great, now if you, uh, if you do download this, uh, this content and decide to play with it, and you go like this, you'll notice that the door opens and closes. That's because there's a trigger box here and a trigger box here, and what you've just done is you've opened the door and you've closed the door by also passing into the close trigger box. So if you want to open and close the door without having that, uh, them happening you know, one after the other immediately, put the controller up, open the door, and again, you can pro you could, I'm sure you could program it so that if you did do this, it would only open. So to open it, put the controller there, open it there, and then just place the controller at the bottom half of this panel and it'll close the door. Great, so I'm gonna walk around this area of the city and show you some of the buildings that are available here. This building here is similar to the building over there, except it has a different texture on it, and it has an additional floor. And uh, can I jump up here? Let's jump up there. Okay, I'm gonna walk around. Again, this is the inter-system uh, operations um, circular. So it primarily functions for inter-system operations, but there are variety, there, I mean, there are so many spaces here that, there, that could be used for a variety of other common access activities or common other, other common tasks. Here we have another building. Okay. Ah, uh, you can see Z fighting occurring in the background. And you'll notice that as I get close here, the Z fighting ceases on the objects that are closer, but still occurring on the background, uh, on the objects in the, the distance. So Z fighting is stop there, stop there, but as I move out, you'll notice the Z fighting occurs again, and then I move back this way. You know, the Z fighting occurs on all. So this is a, another mesh. This right here, these tiles are another mesh that I've put on top of this mesh. I'm sure there's another way to deal with it. I just haven't, you know, I just haven't dealt with that. Uh, but Z fighting is an issue in Stingray. Okay, let's jump up here to this building. This is one of my favorite buildings. It has an aircraft landing and takeoff pad, or each one of these buildings has a landing aircraft uh, landing and takeoff pad, and also a swimming pool. So you can imagine that in case of emergency, uh, where immediate evacuation is required, you could have a cod copter or an aircraft pick someone up and then deposit them here, and they would have uh, quick access to, um, you just have to r roll them in here and immediate access to emergency or complex emergency medical care. So I put my hand, because there's no doors here, or I haven't modeled in any doors, uh, in order to get through the glass, so you can see if I just put the uh, teleporter or jumper up to the glass, there's a big red X, but in order to get through the, uh, the glass, I just put my, uh, the controller through and then jump outside. Okay, and you can see the pool, I can walk on water here. Looking on the water, okay. I'll go down the stairs. Here we have another space underneath the floor above. Look inside here. Yeah, I haven't oh, put any objects in these buildings, but again, that's, oh, 
jumped right through the stairs. But again, that's something we can do. We can literally simulate out the entire city together. We can do it together. We can collaborate upon its design and have different versions, different configurations, and hopefully come to some optimized uh, conclusions. I'm gonna quickly walk around the city. Just, you know, this has basically been duplicated. I completed a few segments of this sector and then duplicated them around. Okay, returning to the original segment that we started at. Okay, now I'll walk over here. So as you can see, there's a, there's a primary pathway here. I imagine that this pathway, although I haven't placed them here, but I imagine that we'll want to place some planters along this pathway. So, and you can see there are no planters along this pathway, but that's just because, excuse me, I haven't duplicated the planters around the city. So yeah, there'll be planters here and planters here. Now, if I had done that completely with the city and put all the objects that I have or all the objects that you know I want in the city, it would probably drop the frame rate. And also there are no LODs or level of details, which is an, uh, a game engine term on any of these models. In Unreal, I'll, I'll, we'll get to level of detail in the Unreal Engine 4 video, but Unreal Engine does LODs automatically, although you can do them externally in a free program like Simply Gone, which is now free, didn't used to be. But you can, Unreal Engine 4 creates LODs for you automatically. Now LOD is when you get closer to an object, it displays a mesh of higher detail. When you get farther away from the object, it displays a mesh of lower detail, therefore using less processing power and less memory. And uh, so an LOD zero would be the highest detail and you would receive that or that would render for you uh, when you're close, you know, taking up maybe, you know, well, 80 to 100% of your visual field. And then the farther away you go from any given object, it will display a mesh of lower detail. Therefore, uh, you know, but, but Autodesk Stingray, it's my understanding that it doesn't do that for you automatically. And I haven't put LODs in this city. Now, if there were LODs in this city, then all of the buildings in the distance that are actually rendering and you could see would be of a lower detail mesh than they are now, and that would save on processing power and memory, and you get a higher frame rate. But, you know, I haven't done that with this city. Uh, but you, you'll, you'll see it more greatly. You'll see that more greatly when I, um, when I show you in the city in Unreal Engine 4, because it's, it's, uh, it's easier to show you that because the, the the city is smaller in Unreal Engine 4, and I can bring models closer to me and show you the change in the, uh, in the mesh as I'm bringing it closer and taking the model farther away. So the belt we're, the circular belt we're in now is the uh, recreation belt. Uh, you know, this is just a recreational space, and we have some common access recreational buildings here. And we have a solar tent here. Right here is a solar tent. It's a sol you could refer to it as a solar shade or solar tent. So we have solar panels up here, which provides shade for anyone who wants shade here um, and is also ge uh, generating electrical power. Here we have a, relax a building for relaxation. We have the flower of life symbol here, there. These are decals like the Oravana logo. Uh, which is projected on the primary pathway over here. These are decals being projected on the walls and floors here. So another shade, and over here we have a, uh, just a common access recreational building. We have a pagoda. This is supposed to be a volleyball court, although the tent really isn't tall enough for volleyball. And uh, I think we're seeing sand. <laughs> okay. That's not right. But over here we have a tennis court. So, you know, you can imagine playing tennis, uh, another tennis court, another tennis court, a variety of different courts are possible depending upon the, what the individuals in that given city desire, you know, that'll be tailored to the, um, the needs, wants, and preferences of any given population. Okay, here we have a sports activity field. Again, two solar tents. We have a natural pond. Okay, so what you're seeing here, it looks like the it looks like there's actually displacement or a height differential in the terrain, but there there isn't. There is one you can have one terrain map and that modifies the terrain significantly, but it, you can't get small detail like this. What you're seeing right here is called a normal map or a normal texture, and that just basically modifies the light rays and bounces them back so that it gives you the fake appearance of there being 
displacement in the terrain, but there is no actual displacement in the terrain. Again, Autodesk Stingray is a somewhat new engine and you can't do terrain displacement um, or height map displacement in, um, in Autodesk Stingray just yet. So hopefully in the future they'll make that possible, but you can add normal maps to the terrain at the present point in time. So uh, yeah, you can, I mean it looks like there's displacement here, but there is actual, no, there's no actual displacement. That's just uh, the light rays bouncing back in a very specific manner to fake displacement. Okay, I'm gonna walk across the water here. Few more common access buildings, more common, another primary pathway leading from the boundary of the city to the center of the city. Okay, walk up here, I'll walk up here for you. Up. Okay, and go up to the third floor. There's glass, I don't know if you can see the glass pane in front of me walk out to the balcony. There's no door leading out to the, there's several glass panes. There's one here, another one here. Can't see the, can't see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's another pane. So in order to get out, I'm gonna put my controller through the glass and then jump out onto the balcony. Uh, look out. Okay, there's another balcony over there. Go there. Yeah, and I can actually walk around here. I can, oh. That's the, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the boundary of the virtual environment. If, I'm to, if I was to walk outside of there, I begin uh, knocking into objects in the real world. So, jump there. All right, now let's jump. You can see some Z fighting. Again, that's very common in Autodesk Stingray. All right. Again, common access recreational buildings, some more common access recreational buildings. Uh, another sports field. Okay. Here we have an indoor pool with a ginormous slide. Okay, there's glass there. There's an open entrance here. Is there glass here? No glass here. All right, another indoor pool. Again with a very, am I jumping through there? I guess there's no collision. No, no collision, so I can't jump. Oh, I can jump under it? I guess I can. Okay, well, you can imagine yourself sliding down here. That looks like a lot of fun. Okay. Um, great, let's keep going. So we're coming to another natural pond, natural swimming pond. Okay. And then uh, the, the segments basically are just duplicated around, so there's not much new. I guess these buildings are, well, they're, they're similar to the, they're exactly the same as those buildings. They've just been scaled larger. Again, I just duplicated the city around. So this is just a proof of concept. Nothing too complex, didn't take me long to create. Okay, some more of these shaded buildings. All right. The next sector we shall come to is the low density dwelling sector. All right, I'll start over here. Okay, yeah, we have some bicycles, again, a walking garden city. So most people will either walk or take bicycles or rollerblades or, you know, any other form of uh, personal transport around the city. Here we have some planters. Again, here we have, could have permacultural cultivation. Uh, we have a pathway. So these are personal dwellings or homes. I'll uh, walk inside some of these personal dwellings. Whoa, oh, that's Z fighting. Here's another personal dwelling and another personal dwelling over here. Can I enter this one? Yeah, let me see if I can walk upstairs. Oh, that's part of my eyes. Okay. Yep, okay, I'm upstairs. Bit of Z fighting. You know, I imagine anywhere, a, a family with anywhere from uh, one to eight people living in some of these homes. Again, this is a two-story home. Some of them are two stories, some of them are one story. I'm gonna jump down. Another two-story right here. Can I jump, let's jump up here. And we're on the roof. Put my hand through the glass, into here. The glass there. Another personal dwelling. And over here, over here we have some common access buildings and we have a little pond here. And I haven't, you know, I haven't placed vegetation everywhere, but you can imagine that this would be 
filled with beautiful gardens and beautiful ponds, a network of ponds. So, you know, I haven't done that yet, but we will eventually do that. And, okay, over here, yeah, we have another building here, another personal dwelling over here. This is very, yep, very strange, very strange. Okay, let's jump up here, and then this is my, some Z fighting down there. My favorite personal dwelling, you have your own personal pool, lap pool, just walk outside, experience your own lap pool. This is just, I, I really like this building. Um, very same as the, it's very similar to the other building I showed you earlier. So it has a space under here. Put my head in there. Okay, now let me show you upstairs. Uh, sometimes I jump through the stairs, so I don't want to jump through the stairs. Let me see if I can, okay, I'll jump up here, put my hand through here, jump into there. All right, let's jump up onto these stairs. Okay, now we're gonna go to the third floor of this building. Oh, uh, oh, the cord's wrapping around my head. Anyway, here would be a nice office space. You can kind of look out over the city. This is very pretty. So this could be an office for maybe one to three people. A few windows. Okay, look out over the city. You can see some Z fighting. Still, okay, let's jump. We're on the roof. Okay, let's jump to the other building. Okay, and continue on to the high density dwelling area. Jumping, jump here, okay. Walking on water. Here we have apartment buildings. Oh, I'm gonna jump down and stop that Z fighting. Okay, so here we have three apartment buildings for each segment of the high density dwelling. Let me just turn around, unwrap the cable leading to the head mounted display from my neck. Okay, so we have an apartment building. So why would you wanna live in an apartment building? Well, you know, you're higher off the ground than here. You might not wanna caretake a garden here. Um, and you have a lot of services in these buildings themselves. So uh, you're living in a building with possibly a workout, workout space and uh, other activity spaces, a cafeteria. So if you're, and, and you're closer to other people, if that's the sort of, um, you know, that's the sort of living arrangement that you prefer, then this would be where you'd want to live. The tower hosts a variety of different spaces. Let me jump up here and you can see the, uh, let me get as high as possible so we can look out over the city. Let's do it with there. Maybe I can get up, can I get up there? Okay, yeah. Now you're gonna see a lot of Z fighting. I don't know how bothersome to that, to you that will be, but it's quite bothersome to me. But anyway, you can get a picture of the city. Now it's not rendering all of the city, but the city is complete all the way around, complete as I, I made it. I mean, not everything's been modeled out, not everything. For example, the planters haven't been duplicated all the way around. And so it's not rendering the entire city at once because you know, it is a two kilometer city, so it's not rent. And over here we see the mass rapid rail transportation system leading from the center to the center of the next city. Anyway, you can see the, uh, the high density dwellings, the apartments here. Okay. All right, and we can enter this space here. Here, let's go this way, go through here. Okay, we can look down, I don't know if, oh. I jumped down there, I jumped down there. Boom, down again. Okay, out we go. All right, so we have some other service buildings here. This is just a common access service building. Oh, I would like to show you this. I have not modeled, I have not duplicated this around the city, but here we have a vineyard inside the city. So this vineyard is presently growing grapes. Grapes. So if wine is your thing, and uh, or you like eating grapes, you can have a vineyard inside the city. Next, we come to the first, another planter, right here. Okay, first we come to the first water channel, and here this is an ingress-egress uh, point of access for the mass rapid rail transportation system. Now it doesn't, I haven't modeled it out to the far extent of the terrain, so I place this ingress-egress point right here, but I imagine that in, the, uh, in a more final version of the city that this ingress-egress point would be at the boundary or border, uh, each boundary or border, each entrance or exit of the city, so it would be farther down that way. Now this is the greenhouse garden belt. So this is one potential greenhouse and we can create uh, an automated greenhouse in here. So we could, oh, I must touch both at the same time. Just touch, open, okay. And we'll walk in here. Yep, it's remaining open. 
Yeah, so we can uh, model out the, the automated greenhouses, uh, which is kind of interesting. I haven't done that yet, but that's a task for, or that's a future project that we could do, and then we could incorporate the automated greenhouses into this virtual reality simulation. Again, all of this is just a proof of concept, showing that you know we can work together and we can begin creating, at least in virtual reality, that which we hope to see eventually in the real world. Okay, so another greenhouse, and over here we have a third greenhouse with an algae bioreactor on top. And the algae is being exposed to the sun, so... Yep, we, I'm not going to show you the rest of this sector. As you can see, I basically just duplicated these buildings all the way around the city. Okay, now let's... Oh, here we have a, a channel roller, so this can this could be, uh, you know, have a variety of different purposes. It could have been used in the construction of these channels. Uh, it could be, it could roll the channels, it could cut out the channels. Uh, these channels, we can have evaporation distillation units on top of these channels to evaporate the water, purify the water, and provide safe drinking water for everyone in the city. Uh, so this is the second water channel from the inside outward. Next we come to the circular symbiotic farming belt. Here we have the agricultural or a form of permacultural zone and right here we have bamboo so I can just walk through the bamboo for a moment. This bamboo is actually somewhat high poly bamboo so uh, the frame rate might be dropping a bit. But... Okay and so there's quite a bit of surface area around the city so this this uh, zone would go entirely around the city. We could cultivate a variety of different crops, both for their, uh, both for textiles um, and for food cultivation. Over here, we have some electrical power generation systems. Here we have a solar farm, and over here we have solar spheres. Let me get close to the solar panel so you can see the solar panels. These, uh, these don't track the sun in their present form, but we could always have these track the sun. Uh, in a more detailed simulation of the city. Here we have a solar sphere. The solar sphere concentrates solar energy and then the, so, the solar receiver here receives that solar energy. Okay. Uh, again, circular symbiotic farming involves the, uh, the, the farming or cultivation of a variety of different animals which uh, pass around the um, pass around the various segments at different points in time. Over here we have roosters. Let me get close to the rooster and show you the rooster. We are. Okay, over here we have cattle, cows. Over here we have a somewhat poorly modeled goat. Hello, goat. Hello, are you hungry? All right, over here we have some pigs. You know, depending upon the culture uh, and the geographic area, the animals will be different. So, you know, and these trees are representative of this also being an orchard. Over here we have a ram. Okay, and over here we have wind turbines. So I'll just show you the wind turbines. Again, geographic uh, location will determine whether or not there is sufficient wind for uh, using wind turbines. Also, we might not want the wind turbines that close to the general population area because they tend to, pr at least these, this form of wind turbine tends to produce a uh, kind of a low vibratory hum, which can be somewhat disturbing to some organisms and some people. So uh, yeah, these would probably be located a bit farther out and and uh, yeah, it depends upon geographic location as to whether or not they would be a viable uh, electrical power generation source. Looks almost real. Okay, I'm gonna walk up the hill here and then look back down over the city. Again, you're not gonna be able to see the entire city because it's not gonna render the entire city at once. You know, you might be able to change that. I might be able to change that so that it renders more of the city at any given point in time, but that would definitely lower the FPS until LODs are placed on these buildings. Okay, let us uh, let me show you the mass rapid transportation system briefly. I think we're about done with this walkthrough. So, okay, passing some of the animals. Up. All right. Okay, let's walk through here. All right, now let's jump up there. 
Can I jump up there? Where can I jump? I Sometimes I jump way far in the distance, so I don't want to jump too far. Let me jump out here and then jump here. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I didn't jump high enough. How am I going to get? Okay. I jumped into a space without a stairway. Can I jump up there? Okay, yeah. All right, Z fighting here. This uh, building is actually in this area right here is actually overlapping the... Um, the is overlapping the rail system here. So I'm just gonna walk along the track. And that train's gonna come right back at me. How do you feel about this? Are you comfortable? I don't know how comfortable I am. That's gonna come at very high speed. That's, oh, it's coming at me. It's, oh, oh. <gasps> No, I'm fine, whatever. Uh, yeah, and we could give guided tours. So we could have the rail system go from one city to another city, city and we could record a guided tour. So you could uh, walk up here, get on this, uh, attach yourself or get in, get in the, uh, the cabin and have a nice experience, virtual experience uh, as you travel to another integrated city system. Which in the game engine would be another level. So at some point in time, it would switch to another level. You could have more than one city in several different levels. Okay, I'm gonna jump down here. I don't think there's anything else. I'm just gonna briefly show you the central area of this city. Okay, open the door, walk through, and open the door again. Okay. Here we have a, a brief depiction of the Oravana project's four design specifications. This is the cover of each specification. Uh, over here we have some of the primary models from the three available specifications. I'm still working on the material system specification. That hasn't yet been released just yet. But uh, these, so every society contains these four fundamental systems. A social system, a decision system, an economic system is a decision system, is part of the decision system. Uh, the lifestyle system and the material system. So I'll just read what's written here. Every society contains these four systems and Every different type of society is composed of a different internal makeup of these four systems. We propose, and groups like ours propose, a community type society and hence an internal makeup of these four systems oriented toward human fulfillment and ecological sustainability. So different types of society will, will with different types of society will all still have these four fundamental systems, it's just the internal makeup of these four fundamental systems will be different. They'll have a different social structure, they'll have a different way of arriving at decisions uh, and which will lead to different decisions taken they'll have different lifestyles and the material structure of the uh, of the architecture and systems and cities that they build will be different they'll select different technologies and they'll select different materials and they'll organize those technologies and materials in different ways yeah so what we're proposing is a community type society with a very specific uh, composition, internal composition of these four systems. So I'm not going to show you these models just yet. Uh, you, I'm going to present them to you in a different video. It'll be a very brief kind of walkthrough of the design specifications and the primary models in each of the four or each of the three specifications because I haven't finished this specification. Again, you can access all these models uh, via our GitHub page and you can visit the project on our website at oravana.com. That's A-U-R-A-V-A-N-A dot com.